港微博、人民视频、新华社现场云、央视新闻、央视频。As well as uh, um, CCTV and its affiliated website, Hongxing、uh, News, Shangguan News, and Zhejiang Observation, and other、uh, news agencies and networks to join all of our partners in this.、Um, Um, broadcast online. We welcome you to interact with us through the network. I'm the、uh, host today, and today with me are、uh, the researchers, Mr. Liu Rui from、uh, CASS. Just now, our reporters have taken us to the site. What we can see. Is the remains of the、um, architecture. So, can you tell us more about the location of、uh, this、um, uh, site? We started excavating this site since 2013, and this is the palace area. We have uh, uh, number two, number three, and number four. Uh, Tombs, and、uh, this is、uh, the living. This used to be the living area of the royal palace. We can see that the living area is quite vast. So does it shows that the city, the scale of city, is quite was quite quite big. That is true. The number one Asian city we found. Is uh, uh, the second largest、uh, Asian city, and、uh, city number three. We have、uh, already discovered the north and uh, uh, south wall. And、uh, there are bound relics that were found in this、uh, number three Asian city. So does it have a lot to do with this specific location? So to the north of the city, there is the Strong River, and uh, uh, we can see a lot of uh, uh, embed a lot of、uh, embedment. So all of these. Um, um, These relics are buried about、uh, 1.5 meters to 3 meters deep into the ground. So during the process, do we find any um, um, Signs of the Asian transportation. Yes, this is a very important、uh, juncture in Asian、uh, transportation, according to Sima Qian's record of the、uh, history. This is quite an important、uh, location and has、uh, important uh, strategic uh, significance. So you mentioned、uh, three cities. So are these three areas totally separate with each other? We can take a look at this picture. This is uh, uh, city number one, number two, and number three. To the west of the first uh, uh, city is、uh, city number three, which is uh, where we will be uh, digging today. So these、uh, three cities are quite adjacent to each other, and、uh, there are some overlapping of、uh, city one and two, and、uh, the city number three is、um, independent place. So these three places are,、um, you can tell, you can say that they are office area or a working area, but、uh, the place that we look at today is mainly the living area. So can we predict? 
some of the relics that we will find today. Most of them will be um, utensils, daily utensils. Uh, there may be ovens and uh, bathrooms. Many people may know about this uh, Yueyang city, and many may not. Now let's take a look at a clip of an introduction of uh, the archaeological uh, research of the city of Yueyang. The city of Yueyang has three, experienced three phases. Uh, first phase began in 1963. Uh, Li Haifeng, a villager, found by accident a pole, uh, a, a um, can that includes six gold uh, gold coins, which kicks off, kickstart the beginning of uh, uh, the excavation of the site. And um, the location of the Yueyang city was determined since then. So with the leadership of uh, researcher Yu Yuefeng, uh, the CAAS archaeological team have uh, come to the site and determine the uh, the location of the west and uh, the um, southern wall of the Yueyang city. But at that time, the underground water level is rising, so they have to they had to pause this process. And uh, after some years, an, the CAS led another team, sent another team to the excavation site, and has made important breakthroughs. Many important relics were found during this process, including uh, some of the remains of uh, the um, some of the remains of uh, the city. All right, after careful preparation and permission of the experts, I already enter the ruins of the Yueyang city. So we have, uh, according to the um, clips, understood that uh, there are three periods of, uh, um, of uh, the excavation. And uh, here we have uh, Professor Li Fang, which is also the first, one of the first researchers, archaeologists, who came to the ruins of Yueyang. You can see that many relics are found at the site. Can you tell us what they are? Right now, we are trying to clean out uh, some of uh, the tiles and uh, building materials that is uh, the ring ruins of uh, the um, of uh, uh, the architecture so when the uh, buildings when the architecture collapsed most of uh, the tiles fell to this area after cleaning out this area we find some hard surfaces, which might proven to, which might be proven to be uh, corridors. So we are now inside the um, architecture. Yes, that is true. We'll see more uh, during our work of next year. Here we can see a very um, thick. Pediment. So does it uh, uh, mean that uh, this place was quite big? Yes, this is a very well, this place is very well preserved. It's very complete. So in this quite a quite large area, and uh, can you tell us from our experience what this place is for during ancient time? 
Well, after years of work, and including uh, during the 1980s and uh, 2013, we found uh, remains of a palace to the south of the city. And this, we believe, is the was the living area of the Qing and Han dynasty. But we didn't find small rooms in this structure. So we determined that this might be the managerial um, area um, of the living area. So this is the managerial area of the living area of the palace um, of the royal court. So that that is the new discovery that we found, yes? Th that is uh, because this uh, this is the first time that we disclose this discovery to our audience. We can confirm to our audience that according to Professor Li, according to her experience of all these years, this place, uh, city number three, is uh, the managerial area of the living space of the Qing and Han dynasty. So what evidences do you have? Well, it has the north court and uh, the south yard. But this place is quite wholesome. It is not divided into small spaces. We see, we saw a cylinder-shaped um, object here. So what is it? It has two functions, we believe. The first is uh, they serve as a flagpole. And uh, it also might be a pillar of uh, um, of this building. So it might be the foot of a flagpole or the foot of a, a pillar. So this is the exterior of uh, the um, of the building. So it's not uh, uh, at the inside of the building. So we think that uh, it probably is a a flagpole instead of uh, an inner door um, pillar. So do we find one or many? Uh, we together found four. So this is a clear signature that this is a royal structure instead, instead of a, a remains of a, a common family because it's not likely for um, the for one of the um, common people to have uh, a uh, pole at home or a pillar at home. So as we predict, this is the managerial area of uh, the living space. And, or you can consider it uh, the logistic uh, department. I myself is very interested in archaeology, so today is also a rare opportunity for me. Uh, so can you teach me how to do this kind of uh, excavation? I myself is quite curious. You can use my tool to try to clean up this tile. Right now, I have the tools. I can experience firsthand uh, this um, excavation process. Can use this brush to brush off some of the dust. Uh, 
对吗？嗯、um, ，对。然后你就找这个边儿，用手炒一下。Use the brush first, and use the shovel to do digging. Well, my my hands is my hands are shaking. This is relics from two thousand years ago. She's so proficient, but this is my first time. So my hands is sh my my hand shakes a bit. Are there any techniques? You can use one hand to hold on to it to steady it, and then use the other to do the cleanups. 对对对，那这个比较大，我能不能先取一块这个，这个这个这个小的？好，那行，我看我看到这个是非常的，经过我们。So do we do this together? Okay, you hold on to it. I was a little bit nervous. Well, Professor Lee, can you tell us more about this tile? Uh, what information can we discover from this piece of tile? We call this a mushroom-shaped uh, tile. This is quite special. Uh, this kind of tiles have uh, existed from the Warring States area to the Han Dynasty. But we need to tell from its shape what, which dynasty it is from. We can see that uh, this is uh, quite delicately made. Confined from the texture and carvings and determine that this piece of tile is uh, from the mid warring states area. Well, the relic has spoken. I am from the warring states area. This kind of um, uh, patterns exist from the Warring States area all the way through Han Dynasty, but we can tell from some of the specifications that this is from the Warring States area. So this is the logistic area of uh, the um, Qing and Han Dynasty, and we also discover firsthand a piece of tile that is from the mid Warring States area. So that's all I have discovered during my interview. Thank you, Hao Chong and Professor Li. For the two discoveries that we have found at the location, we can see that many relics are being discovered. And I really envy Hao Chong because uh, he can do this uh, by his hand. This kind of hands-on experience mm. is quite um, precious. Well, Professor Lee, can you tell us more about this piece of tile? Uh, because uh, we are we are curious as to where, how do we determine the time of uh, all of these relics? Well, the main evidence or proof is the pattern on this tile. At uh, its surface, at its back, and at the inside, as well as of uh, its uh, cutting techniques, it seems to be a simple judgment, but it needs years of experiences to tell. Well, this is um, ruins number three. This is uh, at the back area and the, the west side of the living area. Uh, we found uh, a cylinder uh, object on the ground. So how do we determine its function? 
Well, we found this kind of uh, uh, object since 2014 and has been bothering us. We found this kind of object uh, at uh, uh, ruins number one and number two as well. And uh, we couldn't determine the function of it. But this time, we found more of this that uh, exist in rows. Uh, most of them are outside the architecture, so we tend to determine that this is the uh, these are flagpoles. So how do we call it? Uh, flagpoles? Just call them flagpoles. So, well, according to our understanding of Asian architecture, this has never been found in Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasty. I think this is the earliest flagpole um, that we have found in our um, excavation of Han and the Qing dynasty um, ruins. We are very curious as to the um, uh, some of the um, experiences or technique during the excavation. It may seem simple, but it takes years of uh, practice. You have to do this gently. It might seem very complete, but there might be some uh, uh, injuries. So you have to be gentle through all of these processes. You need to take pictures, you have to make recordings, you need to number it before you send it to the research institute. Were other relics found uh, similar to this? Yes, because this kind of tile existed all the way from warring states to the Han Qing dynasty. But that one was quite well preserved, which is also very rare. I would believe that there should be some uh, um, facilities, daily facilities. <laughs> Can you tell us more? I was especially curious about the bathroom, the royal bathroom. It's not only the royal bathroom that we have found since 2013, but we have uh, come to know the uh, total layout of these palaces. So this bathroom was discovered by surprise. I'm sorry I have to interrupt you. We have another reporter at, who is at the bathroom area of um, this ruin. So Feng Yulong, can you tell us more? Well, this is the five-star bathroom. So how luxury is it in this royal palace? Well, Professor Li, can you tell us more? What is the layout of this bathroom? This is a five-room bathroom. This is the entrance. So you can consider it as, as a suite, and uh, that's all. That's the um, entrance of the inner chamber. And you go down this way. You can see a um, the the sewage over there. And uh, 
and uh, the uh, water system. So this is a very luxurious suite with uh, three bathrooms and inner chamber. Well, I thought that they just took bath in the river. I never thought that uh, they will have uh, um, bathrooms of this size. This is a separate uh, bathroom, also a suite. This, I think, is the king's bathroom, and that one is the queen's bathroom. This discovery is the only one, the only royal palace, or should I say the um, earliest uh, uh, findings of the bathrooms with a complete set of drainage system. This is another bathroom. That's the entrance and also drainage. It is smaller in size, so probably it's not for the king or queen, but I think it's um, more likely for some of uh, the um, the officials. We also found the kitchen over there with a very big uh, uh, stove with a diameter of 80 centimeters, quite big. So we think that that has to be this um, a kitchen area, royal kitchen, which is also the um, um, providing place for the hot water of the bathrooms. So we believe that all of these city are no longer ruins, called ruins to us. We almost see the royal palace emerge in front of our eyes. This is the uh, stove, the fireplace, the fireplace of the royal palace. This is the earliest um, uh, earliest fireplace that we have discovered in the archaeology of China. This is the place where they place the charcoal, and this is the where you light the fire. And if you don't need it, you can close down the store, and the fire will be extinguished. So there are walls. Um, you can also see the chimney over there. This is really um, designed in a very scientific way. We are also very curious about the excavation site. This is the eastern area. You can see some of our professionals are doing their work. Can you tell us what they are doing? This is the easternmost area of the relic of the ruins. You can see a wall and an entrance. Here is another wall leading to the exterior, and, look, and another one leads to the backyard. You can see a structure over here. This should be the northern wall. And uh, the uh, corner pillar. We can also see some remains of the floors, uh, floor tiles over here. We don't know what this place is, uh, what this location's function so far, but many exquisite uh, tiles were found in this place. We will not know more until we finished all of this cleaning up. 
We do not know the depths of this place. We can see many tiles over here. So, is it possible that this is a basement? It is likely. We do not know whether this is a basement or a bathroom. Or a uh, semi-basement. So many such similar structures were found. Thank you, Professor Li. We have uh, a lot of surprises today, and we're looking forward to more findings. That's all for my part. Let's return to the studio. Professor Liu, we were quite marveled at all of these findings of uh, the site. The bathroom was so exquisite, so we can imagine that the economy must be quite developed by, by then. Uh, yes, that is uh, we called a rebound area of the Qin dynasty. And uh, in the third year of Xiao Gong, um, we have uh, the Shangyang reforms, which has been a major boost for the Qin dynasty's economy. This is not only the place for Shangyang reforms, but uh, we can consider it uh, the reform capitals because uh, there were many reforms um, that has taken place in Yueyang city. In the seven years of Xiao Gong, we have the market reform, and uh, the market economy started by then. And then we have they have uh, the um, um, the residence reforms. And uh, in the third year of Xiao Gong, uh, we all know the Shangyang reforms, which is also commended by Chairman Mao. Uh, Many discoveries and historical records have been found. We see very big building materials, tiles, and steps, and uh, indeed the whole structure of the architecture have served as the foundation for future style of Chinese architecture. Mm. We really can see the Chinese history during these findings. Well, can you tell us more about the history? Because there is a town, Yueyang town. So, how far is Yueyang City to Yueyang Town? Well, that's the city of Xi'an today. This is the city of Chang'an, the ancient Chang'an capital. And this is the uh, Qing, uh, Qing Palace, and this is uh, where the, um, uh, the tomb of the emperor Qing Emperor and go all the way to the north would be the city of Yueyang. Well, this is quite clear to our audience because many may ask where is the city exactly. Well, let's take a look at another map. That's the excavation site. That's the central area. Also, um, the historical site that we visit today, and uh, we have uh, uh, discovered the, wa the west and northern wall. Go all the way to the south is the craft industry area, uh, which will lead for leave for later discoveries. 
Well, this really is the turning point for Qing Dynasty, and uh, the Qing Dynasty undergone many twists and turns before it became stronger. So we we'll know more about the Qing Dynasty's history through, through the following clip. The Qing Dynasty and uh, uh, the Qing people started at the Yongcheng area, and uh, the first capital was there, established there. So during the Warring States area, after Xian Gong resumed assumed the, the throne, he um, changed the capital to Yueyang City in 383 BC, and he has won a war. And uh, um, the country of Qin has become stronger since then. After that, it is uh, renowned Shangyang reforms after which Qing has become the strongest and most affluent state of all the warring states. And uh, the capital of Qing has removed, been moved to Yueyang, to Xianyang, after the Shangyang reforms. In the states, uh, in the process of unifying this whole country, the city of Yueyang is a mirror that has witnessed this history of development of the Qing, state of Qing. Through our clip, we found that the, the capital of the Qing Dynasty have undergone many changes before it unified all of the warring states. The work of our uh, archaeology professionals has made it possible for us to witness um, the history by us. We have another important discovery here at the site. Can you tell us more about this piece of tile? This is a very typical Warring State tile, which is um, which is in round shape. It's clearly from uh, the Warring States area. So um, all of the tiles are uh, matching the time that we predict. This is uh, quite small. It's not very complete, so um, we cannot just check it out right now. We have to um, we have to leave it here for a while before we check it out. You can take pictures, though. We have undergone more than 60 years of archaeology work, and you have been a participant from the very beginning. You were only in your 30s when you first came here. So I want to tell my audience that uh, Professor Li is already 77 years old and still working at the site of um, the archaeology site, and uh, you are the most senior professor, most senior expert. This is quite hard work, so why do you insist working at the front line, even at this age? When I graduated from the archaeology um, department of Peking University, I chose this major because I was determined to do this well, and I have deep passion. I was very passionate of, the, of uh, my career. So despite all of these, uh, um, you can say, conflict, with or with my um, uh, family and work, I still choose to work at the front line. There were three cities that we discovered here. 
And uh, can you tell us more through this uh, introduction? This is uh, site number one. And uh, I, me and my husband were the first to come here to uh, do the excavation of uh, ruin number one. We found uh, these um, roads, these pathways, many building materials, the remains of the ancient walls, and tombs in this area. So that's city number one. That's the wall. So why do we come here? It is because the city of Yueyang used to be the capital of Qing and Han. And it has very important strategic location. Liu Bang and uh, Sima Qian all came to this this uh, city. Well, this is city number two, which is also the biggest city that is constructed during the uh, ruins of Wu Di of Han Dynasty. This is uh, number city number three where we are. At right now, this is the earliest uh, uh, of these three cities. This is also the river basin of the Shichuan River because there were many floods back then. This is the earliest states, uh, earliest city, and because of the frequent floods, um, the location of the city were moved to number two and number three, uh, to number one and number two. So what is the thing that you remember the most during all of these years of experience? We found a very beautiful um, lit. This is really exquisite in with the shape of a dragon. I was quite excited. It's a bit broken. So I continue my discover uh, my discovery to find the missing piece. And then I uh, this this lid was complete. You can see that uh, this pattern is so exquisite that you can see the claws and the beard and the mustache of uh, of this uh, dragon. Because we know that the Chinese dragon has become a symbol of the Chinese nation since the Tang Dynasty, that's our former understanding. However, this discovery has taken us back to 2,000 years ago, where the the dragon is a com in its complete image with its claws and beard and all. Well, this is quite exquisite. We have to thank you for your effort. Many viewers are tuning in, and uh, we have some viewers are asking questions. So uh, uh, the first question, I heard the story of Shangyang reforms since I was little. So, Professor Li, can you tell us the exact lo location? Well, what we found is a bit different than literature. But right now, we are at the living area of the palace, and that place is the office area. So, where is the exact location of uh, uh, Shangyang's reform. We do not know that yet. And we have to know, tell this uh, by uh, more 
discover at this site. Second question, the technology is advancing so fast, and uh, um, why are we still using shovels and uh, brushes to do this? These are handheld tools, and they are quite uh, handy, I think. We have uh, many kinds of shovels with different shapes. It is quite handy to use. We heard that remote sensing can be used. I've tried remote sensing during the discovery of the Chang'an city ruins, but uh, we failed. The reason is that it, the remote sensing technology can tell us whether this is soil or uh, metal or wood, but uh, cannot tell us about the specific um, layers of the soils. That's why we are still using these uh, shovels, also known as Luoyang shovel. These small shovels seem to be quite uh, shabby, but they are very useful. Can you tell us more about this uh, soil? Well, this is still quite messy, and we have to dig deeper until we reach the ground. With this kind of depth, we will know more. And so far, uh, we haven't reached the depth, reached the bottom of uh, this place. And uh, these tools have re already been remodeled and has been updated, much more handy uh, than when we started working. These small tools has made all of these important findings possible. So I still want to thank uh, Professor Lee and all of the archaeology professionals for your hard work. Let's come back to the studio. Professor Lee have taken two questions, and we may find that the public were, are very curious about uh, the archaeology uh, work. We have a new discovery, yes? Another piece of tile with special pattern on it. Well, this uh, concentric circle um, is quite special because that uh, this is specific to the city of Yueyang. No similar piece of sieve tiles have been discovered elsewhere. Tiles are quite common in the area of Xi'an, but this pattern, this concentric circle uh, tile is specifically used in the city of Yueyang. There are many similar tiles that are specific to the city of Yueyang, because this is a place of reforms, not only Shangyang reforms. The reforms touched many parts of uh, this city, changing lives in a full spectrum. So it has many specific um, changes to it. So uh, Professor Lee was the first generation of uh, um, archaeologists, and you are generation number two, yes? So I want to thank all of our hard work of uh, the archaeologists. Thank you so much for your work after all these years. Let's know more through another clip. of the recent of the discoveries of the recent years
这些这些建筑材料的。天水利工程的考古掘控。它这个角度也是这个基本上差不多。
就是说是我要这个查片，就是这个最终瓦当。We can prove that、uh, these broken pieces belong to this big tile, its giant tile. This is really the king of uh, uh, of the tiles because of its size. We can see some broken pieces of、um, uh, clay of clay pot. And some uh, uh, tiles. This is quite common. Uh, the, the the with the sunflower、uh, patterns on it. It's quite exquisite, but it's quite common during the Warring States area. Uh, we talked about、uh, this dragon shaped, this dragon pattern. But today, uh, but uh, till today, we have、uh, find many similar tiles and decorations with the pattern of dragon. You can see two dragons: the head, the claw, another claw, and this is the tail of the dragon. It's, here's another dragon. That's as you can see. These two dragons are intertwined with each other. But the, the second dragon only have one claw. Only has one claw. This is the earliest uh, uh, dragon-shaped tile that is carved on a tile. It even has two horns at its head. And its shape is also very naturally intertwined with each other. It's quite、uh, amazing to look at. Also, this is、uh, the symbol of good fortune. You can see some、uh, carvings on this piece of clay pot. This is the neck of the clay pot. It has、uh, the carvings Yue, the Chinese character Yue, and the Yang on it. That is the name card of the city, of course. This, this also echoes.、Uh, also,、um, it's clear evidence that this is the city of Yueyang. No mistake. So, do you have similar discoveries in the city of Xianyang and Chang'an city? No, this is the only one that has the name of the city carved on this clay pot. Here is another、uh, piece of clay pot. As you can see, the character Yue on it. The city of Yueyang is an important、uh, juncture in transportation in ancient times. When I came here in 1980s, I also found similar broken pieces that has the city name on it. But this time, we found more. This said that、uh, that this is the market of the Yueyang city, which signifies that the economy of the city. Is quite、um, is quite advanced. It's quite highly developed. The last pieces are quite amazing. I believe that all of our audience would be impressed because no one can question the authenticity of this place. Of uh, uh, that this exactly is、uh, the city of Yueyang. Many of the relics were. Showing to the public for the first time. We are not professionals in terms of relic protection, but you are, Professor Li. What are the、uh, protection work that we have done、uh, to these relics? We really want to thank the、uh, city government for supporting us because they have、uh, leased this. 
uh, lend to us in in 2013, and uh, the a complete protection plan was approved and began to be implemented implemented step by step. It has all, all also been incorporated to the government's agenda, and many facilities supporting facilities will be put into place afterwards, and we are able to see more in a faster way. That's really a blessing for all of the archaeological lovers and fans. So, Hao Chong, do you have more information at the site? In a limited time that we have, we have many discoveries. Discovery number one, according to Professor Lee's experience, this is the logistic area of uh, the Yueyang Royal Palace. Discovery number two, we found two exquisite pieces of tiles with a cloud shape as well as a concentric circle patterns on it. So in a limited time we have at the site, I have uh, two feelings. First is that the, the pains and gains really come together because after all of the colleagues, all of uh, the professionals work so hard at this place. They put all of their endeavors into the work, but uh, the findings are also so rewarding. The second uh, feeling is that uh, this city dates back to 2,000 years ago, but its layout were quite advanced. That shows that our wisdoms of the ancestor is in so impressive. Our library cast may end now, but the process of excavation continues here. Next year, we will have more do more work at the southern part of the ancient city, and hopefully we can have more discoveries by then. The city of Xi'an is known for its splendid history as the ancient capital, and uh, there are also a lot of relics that were discovered here. So hopefully, all of these relics can be shown to the public after the hard work of our archaeologists. We can find our way back to history and also know more. Uh, about our um, ancestors' wisdom and look into the future. Well, the city of Xi'an is really a um, natural museum. So will we build a uh, museum of the Yueyang city? Can you give us a forecast? We are hoping to establish a modern museum of the relics as soon as we can so that it can be a, a serve as an exhibition hall for all of the relics that we found. We found a lot of positive energy at the site. It's the uh, starting place of all the reforms and also the road of rejuvenation for the Qing dynasty. And uh, also, this is the first capital of the Han dynasty. So it has important historical significance and is so well preserved. There are still a lot of unknown discoveries for us to find out. Now we are looking forward to the establishment of this museum. Today we only show the audience the living area. There are still many other places that worth our expectations. What kind of uh, uh, ways or methods that we use to to protect these relics? Well, the most common method is to build a relics park in order to shorten the period 
of uh, discovery to exhibition so that all of the historical lovers, uh, the, uh, the archaeological fans, can come to the site as soon as we can to uh, know more about uh, the uh, know more about history and have a deeper understanding of our history. We found uh, the city name on the uh, clay pot, which I find so surprising, and yet in a very pleasant way. I myself was very impressed when I found it. Because we already know that this is uh, the city of Yueyang. And uh, actually, that piece of uh, clay pot comes as a name card or an identification for the city. So I also joked with, uh, uh, with Professor Li that uh, we've never found carvings of uh, the city of Chang'an. But the, the city of Yueyang uh, is the first discovery. So were all of these relics shown to the public before? They have never been shown to the public uh, in object. Only in, before, only the pictures of the relics were shown to the public. So we are so privileged to be the first witness of these relics. People may have an impression that the Asian people live a difficult and hard life. But uh, as you can see, they have bathrooms. They have uh, fireplaces. They live quite comfortable life. The city of Yueyang was buried very deep, so it is well preserved. And uh, it is about 1 to 1.5 meters deep. The, well the good preservation of this place would give us more information with the same input. <laughs>